Welcome to Kingdom Reality, your gateway to deep insights into the truths and realities of God's kingdom. Dive deep into the teachings of esteemed teachers of God's Word as they illuminate the mysteries of Scripture, offering priceless wisdom and revelations. Our channel serves as a beacon of enlightenment, guiding seekers on a transformative journey towards understanding the essence of divine truth and purpose. Join us as we explore the depths of spiritual reality and embark on a quest for genuine understanding and spiritual growth, revealing kingdom realities. Nations rise on principles, but true greatness is built on God's foundation. In building a nation in God's way, Pastor Sam Adiemi reveals timeless principles for national transformation. Discover how unity, integrity, and divine wisdom shape the future of nations. Learn how aligning a nation's values with God's blueprint leads to lasting peace and prosperity. Let's build our nation, not just on ambition, but on the unshakable principles of God, guiding you to build a nation the way God intended. Verse 2. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness covered the face of the deep. And God said, it says, and the Spirit of God was moving upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. The first time I read it slowly, I said, wait. Verse 2 said it was dark, it was chaotic. Why was God talking about light in verse 3? Because that was what he saw in his mind. God's thinking was not limited to the circumstances. Was not limited by the circumstances. In his own mind, as chaotic as it was, God saw light. He saw mountains. He saw rivers. He saw streams. He saw plants. He saw animals. Whatever it was that was inside him, that was what he was saying. That's the principle of faith. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. It all starts from inside here. So, the greatest battle we're all fighting right now is to keep that positive picture in our minds. Satan is leveraging suffering. Leveraging the increase in the price of petrol. Leveraging inflation. Leveraging to shift our thinking. And if you understand the New Testament very well, you will understand the real battle is inside here. Now, that's how it, it was for Israel, isn't it? We were like grasshoppers in our own mind. That's it. So, Satan's agenda right now is to produce grasshopper mentality, victim mentality in the minds of all of us. We reject it. We refuse it. For though we walk in the flesh, the weapons of our warfare are not man-made. They are powerful through God to pull down strongholds. Second Corinthians 10, verses 3 to 5. Casting down what imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And making captive every thought to obey Christ. There is no negative situation that can go beyond the cross to make me a victim. My identity as a victim died on that cross. Colossians 2.15 says that God took the handwriting of ordinances that was against us and nailed it to the cross by his own body. Christ nailed anything negative about me was nailed to the cross by his own body. And having, that's the next verse, verse 15, Colossians 2.15, and having disarmed principalities and powers, he made an open show of them, triumphing over them on the cross. Amen? So our own processing is different. I can never be the victim of a man-made system. We belong to a superior system. Did I hear you say amen to that? So we must begin with the vision of a developed Nigeria. Satan wants to beat it out. We must not take it. Remember, the other parts of the world that are developed did not fall from heaven. They were created. They were designed and created. We will create this one. Amen. Did I hear you say amen? amen? When you check the history of the world, you will find that some, some people have been so powerful as creators, humans in control of political power made life so difficult for them some people actually moved out, some, out of some countries and went and built new ones entirely. That's what makes the United States powerful. So the first thing is you accepting and fulfilling your identity as a creator. 
And I want to say this. Revelation must be personal. So those thoughts, those ideas, you and I need to pray to the point where God shows us something personally. I speak with conviction and with passion because of what I've seen. I cannot unsee it. <laughs> and when you read Hebrews 11, you find out that those of us that operate at God's frequency, what we see is not limited to our lifetime. What Abraham saw, Genesis 15, the day God had a discussion with him, God was discussing with him about what will happen 600 years ahead. How his descendants will go to another country, how they will come back after 400 years, how, hey, that's vision. That's vision. That's what creators do. That's where we function. That's where we operate. So, pray. Jeremiah 33 verse 3, call unto me. I will answer you. I will show you great and mighty things that you don't know. I pray in the name of Jesus that heaven will deposit in you what will last beyond your lifetime. If Jesus does not come yet. Number two, tap into your God-given talents. Tap into your God-given talents. If you want to translate those visions, those dreams into reality, you've got to tap into your God-given talent. The one other word we use for those talents is gifts. Gifts. They are endowments. They are acts of God's benevolence. In fact, I see talents as God depositing a small part of himself inside you. There is a musical dimension to God. Creative musical dimension to God. He deposits it in people. They're there. <laughs> Creative, right? There's a part of God that is artistic. There's a part of God that is engineering, right? Different, there's a part of God that is a communicator. There's a part of God that is a writer. Find your talent, find that thing, because it's a gift. And it's the one thing you can leverage to make big things happen. Develop it into a high level of mastery. Develop it into a high level of mastery so that you can create with excellence. This is important. Next. Network with as many other creators as possible. Network with as many other creators as possible. You cannot build a nation alone. Amen? Network with as many other creators as possible possible. That's why when they asked Christ, which is the greatest commandment? He said, love the Lord your God. He said, the second one is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. On these hang all the law and the prophets. So all the ten commandments that God gave Israel in the desert. Jesus said, this is the summary. Love your neighbor as yourself. The, don't kill. You shall not kill. Uh, you shall not steal. You shall not lie. All of it, just sum it up. Love your neighbor as yourself. Ah. You know, sometimes we say humorously, the devil is a bad devil. Because when you look at what's going on in our country right now, um, the level, when there is suffering, when there is lack, when there is hunger, the level of love goes down. The level of selfishness goes up. Am I right? Because natural instinct is for you to find a way to stay alive before you help other people to stay alive. Even in an aircraft, when they do the safety instructions, when the plane is about to take off, they tell you, in the event of sudden loss of air pressure, oxygen masks will descend from the panel above your head. They said, please fix your own first before you help somebody else. <laughs> that is the natural order of things. Selfishness. Self-centeredness. However, for those of us that are creators, that's, those are not the rules we play by. Amen? Amen. Mm, those are not the rules we play by. If we will be able to bath, see, God himself said, it is not good for man to be alone. I need to create another human in his class. 
I know the only place where some of us have ever had that verse is at wedding service. This is not a wedding service. This is creator service. Amen. <laughs> uh, so what God was saying there was more than uh, marriage, even though he made marriage central to it, especially the family. But his ultimate purpose, what was he saying? One human being cannot create what we want to create on this planet. We need other beings in his class. And because we created him to be a creator, he needs to know how powerful he is. The most valuable asset we've created is him. We delegate to him the power to create other beings like himself. You are more powerful than you think. So, God said you cannot do it alone. So accept it. Network with other creators. So don't be part of those that are creating division. I say this specifically as a Christian. If you, once you come to that point where either because of differences in gender or differences in tribe or differences in religion, you develop hatred for someone, you are functioning below capacity. A Christian cannot be part of that. When Jesus said, love your enemies, that you may be the children of your father, he causes the sun to rise both on the just and on the unjust. Amen? Amen? Good. Love your neighbor as yourself. Live by God's values. And then number four, invest in young people. You cannot talk about building a new nation without talking about young people. Amen? Because it's their job. Invest in young people. We don't have time to discuss that in details today. And finally, never give up. Never give up. So that's the thing about those of us who have already seen the spiritual reality of something. We never give up until it becomes a physical reality. Amen. Amen. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 3, New Living Translation. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 3. This vision is for a future time. It describes the end and it will be fulfilled. If it seems slow in coming, wait patiently, for it will surely take place. It will not be delayed. Amen. Amen. From the moment God says it, it becomes a reality, spiritually. Amen. Amen. From the moment God says it, it becomes a reality spiritually. And we hold on to it. It governs our lives. It guides our decisions. Influences our behavior. We hold on to it until that spiritual reality becomes our physical reality. So, this service is for the creators. This service is for the innovators. As we celebrate Nigeria's independence, we celebrate Nigeria not just the way it is physically. We celebrate the spiritual one. Amen. <laughs> we celebrate the new reality. And some of us live inside it. Our confession lines up with it. We're not part of those that complain. Those that complain perished in the wilderness. We're part of those that have a dominion mindset. That in the name of Jesus, this country will not go to ruins. It will not be destroyed. But rather, in the name of Jesus Christ, the anointing to create comes upon us. We create in our own lives first. Amen? Even in the time of hardship, we create businesses. We create families. We create careers. Hmm. Your amen is not... Hmm. <laughs> Those of us that are creators, do you know it's amazing that I saw something in the United States and found out that most of the Fortune 500 companies were created during, either during a time of depression or time of recession. It's amazing. Because the human spirit does not accept failure or destruction as final. Because God gave us that capacity. Your imagination is your opportunity to overcome your limitation. So those of us that are creators, we declare in the name of Jesus Christ, Nigeria will not remain like this. Africa will not remain like this. 
It is this season when everyone is lamenting. We are starting our businesses. We are building our families. We are building our careers. We are building our finances. In the name of Jesus Christ. And we are getting new testimonies. So let's pray for a minute. Say, Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, I receive grace to fulfill my destiny as a creator. To fulfill my destiny as a creator designed in your image. You created me to have dominion. I receive the dominion mindset. I refuse to see myself as a victim. I receive the influence of the Holy Spirit to be a creator in my generation. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Heavenly Father. You said I should call unto you and you will answer me and show me great and mighty things that I don't know. So, Heavenly Father, I ask, open my eyes. Help me to see the things that ordinary eyes cannot see. Because your word says, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has entered into the heart of any man the things you have prepared for those that love you. Lord, in Jesus' name, I receive the spirit of joy. I receive the spirit of joy as you give me the visions with certainty of the future. I break free from sadness. I break free from anxiety. I break free from depression. Thank you, Heavenly Father. I borrow joy from the future. <laughs> and I rejoice even now because the grass with us, the flower fades, but the word of our God abides forever. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Will you stand to your feet with me as you pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you. We declare today we are not part of those that believe in destruction. We declare today we are not part of the complainers. We declare we are creators. We accept our destinies in Christ. We declare we can never be conquered. We declare that we are walking in dominion. We have the spirit of dominion. You said we should have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over every moving thing that moves on this planet. So we declare today we are free from victim mentality. Heavenly Father, we are citizens of your kingdom. We belong to a superior system. We believe that ma we declare man-made systems will never dominate us. They will not dominate our thinking. They will not dominate our faith. Lord, you said whatever they said would come to pass, except for Joshua and Caleb. Except. So we declare today we are the exception. We are the exception. <laughs> While others say there is a casting down, we say there is a lifting up. In the mighty name of Jesus, I present to you, Heavenly Father, everyone that is a part of this service and our families. Because you are a transgenerational God. So we declare in Jesus' name, <laughs> this anointing passes down to our children. Your covenant works on our children's children. They will never be grasshoppers, consumed by circumstances. Rather, they will fulfill their destinies as creators and innovators in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And Heavenly Father, we declare today in Jesus' name that we are creators on a global dimension. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Wherever we find ourselves, we'll be creators there. We will never be victims anywhere on this planet in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So we thank you, Heavenly Father. Lord, I thank you for the person that is a part of this service online or physically who says, Ah, ah, I've been on the wrong side. Lord, we know it is sin that makes us human beings to malfunction. It is sin that makes us negative. It is sin that gives us Satan's nature. But we thank you for sending Jesus to die for us on the cross. So today, <laughs> we pray as you said we should do. And as we do, we receive forgiveness of sins. So Lord, we pray for that honest person who says, my relationship with God is not okay. 
my relationship with God is not okay. I can't say I'm the child of God. So I cannot even be a part of this in the first place. I need God to forgive me my sins. Heavenly Father, we thank you because there's forgiveness in this room. The creation of a new Nigeria begins with the creation of a new us. If any man is in Christ, he's a new creature. Thank you, Heavenly Father. If you are that honest person, can you just put your hand on your heart? You may be here, you may be at home, you may be at the hotel. I am not a child of God. My relationship with God is not okay. I need God to forgive my sins. I need to become a new person. Can you please put your hand on your heart? And let's say this short prayer together as we receive forgiveness from sins. God bless you. Can you say this prayer after me? Dear God, I believe that Jesus paid for my sins. And I ask you today to forgive me because you love me and you sacrificed your son for me. Forgive me my sins and accept me as your child in Jesus' name. Let me pray for you. Can I ask everyone to sit except the people that, are, that put their hands on their hearts? If you remain standing, I pray for you. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for everyone that is a part of this prayer. I thank you because Jesus said you are throwing a party in heaven right now. Their sins are forgiven. The nature of sin is removed from them. And Heavenly Father, we thank you because they are new persons. We ask you, Father, reveal yourself to them. Let them know you personally. And then teach them to love you the rest of their lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Please do have your seats. Let's give them a big hand clap. God bless you. Have you been touched by the message you just heard and you want to give your life to Jesus or you want to rededicate your life to Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Then say this short prayer. Lord, I admit I am a sinner. I need and want your forgiveness. I accept your death as the penalty for my sin and recognize that your mercy and grace is a gift you offer to me because of your great love, not based on anything I have done. Cleanse me and make me your child. Be faithy receive you into my heart as the Son of God and as Savior and Lord of my life. From now on, help me live for you, with you in control. In your precious name, amen. Congratulations to you. If you have just said that prayer, you are now a child of God. Look around you for a Bible-believing church and also ask Jesus to direct you to the church where you can continue to serve Him. Consider subscribing to this channel too, so that you'll keep learning the realities of God's kingdom. God bless you.